Well, good morning. Welcome to Joellen's Kitchen. Today we're going to make an old-fashioned recipe, Pennsylvania Dutch, if you will. And I got it um, secondhand, but it was originally a Letta Shadler's recipe. And it's an old Joe cake. Lots of chocolate and coffee in there. So uh, a favorite around Lebanon County, for sure, from the old timers. And I think that before we get into the cake, I'd like to share something with you. My mother-in-law passed away and we're cleaning out her house. And what did I find in one of her drawers but these, this placemat with all these Pennsylvania Dutch sayings. And they're just great. It just lets you know that the verbs are in a different place uh, than in the English language. And it sounds funny when we listen to them. Um, for instance, I'll just take, pick one out here. Spritz in the grass. That means watering the grass. It wonders me. It troubles me. Those are the kinds of things you'll hear. Smear me all over with butter, a piece of bread. You know, I, can you see yourself all smeared with butter? At any rate, just a fun thing I thought I'd share. And another thing with Pennsylvania Dutch is that there are often hex signs on barns. And you'll find uh, lots of birds included. Things like this, a distal fink and they mean different things. Some mean good luck, some mean fertility, things of that nature. But I happen to have an, a, a long cake pan that we're going to use today to make our old Joe cake. And in it, we're going to put the one layer and coat it with icing. And the favorite around here is peanut butter icing on a chocolate cake. So we'll get started. What I'm going to do first is put all my dry ingredients into one container. So we have two cups of flour in here. We're going to add two cups of sugar. And then we're going to add three quarters of a cup of cocoa. Now, the cocoa. Hershey's is the only kind we know around here. Next, we need two teaspoons of baking soda. Now the baking soda comes in a cardboard box usually, which is awkward to me because the baking powder comes in a can of sorts. And we need one teaspoon of baking powder and that comes in more of a, I think you would expect something like soda, you would think it would be more of a liquid, but it's not, it's, they're both dry. Now, while we're talking about the baking soda, I wanted to share with you a really old can that I have. It's huge, look at this thing. It was part of my uncle's estate when I cleaned out there. So I keep these trinkets and don't ask me why, there's nothing in it. But on the top, it says Baker's Calumet, C-A-L-U-M-E-T. So I guess that simply means baking powder. I thought it was interesting and I thought I'd share it with you. The last dry ingredient that goes into our baking bowl is a half teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to set this aside and we're going to mix the wet ingredients. The next thing I want to do is we have to have a cup of coffee and I'm not a coffee drinker, but for my guests, I keep these packets that I can make a cup of coffee. It's almost like making a cup of tea. And what you do is dip it in the water just like you would a tea bag, and then you have a cup of coffee. Here's our coffee in a tea bag, sort of, and we're gonna put that into the hot water and just make a cup of hot coffee for our cake. Let that soak a bit. We're going to start with two cups of milk. I have that in there already. And we're going to add one half cup of corn oil. It can be any kind of oil, Crisco or whatever, but I happen to use Mazzola. So we want to add two eggs, and I always use extra large eggs. I love big eggs. And 
and we also need to put in some vanilla. Now, a lot of recipes call for just one teaspoon of vanilla, but in Letty Shadler's Old Joe Cake, it takes two teaspoons of vanilla. One. And two. Okay, all we need to do is add the coffee to this mixture. Let's see how it's doing. Oh yes, very good. This mixture is going to be very thin and it's gonna, you're gonna say, really, this is cake batter? Yes, it is. It gets so moist. Alrighty, I think that does it. We're gonna add our coffee to our liquid mixture. And we'll sort of bring out our coffee bag here just to get all the good flavoring out of it. All right, there we go. And then we're going to whisk that together a little bit. And we're going to add it to our dry ingredients. All right, looking good. And we'll start whisking the cake mix together. Okay, in our cake pan, we want to grease all around, and as you know, I like to use my Crisco sticks. Reach in the refrigerator here and pull one out. I actually have one started, so... Now, if you feel like you want to take the cake out of this pan, First, you want to line it with a piece of wax paper, but if you're just going to leave it in this pan to serve it, you can uh, grease it and flour it. And I can tell you that with the lid that I have for this pan, there's no need to take it out. I can serve it and store it all in the same pan. All right. And we're gonna put a little flour in there. Maybe a little more. And you wanna shake it all around cover it on all corners of the bottom and then you want to try and get it up the sides as well and it takes a little bit of patience to to get this technique down but you can do it and then you just want to pour off the excess into your trash can that's really all there is to it so let's pour the batter into the cake pan Again, it's very thin, but that's the way it's supposed to be. Wonder if Letty Shadler will see this. That would be fun. She's still teaching us to cook, even though she's no longer the um, med ed cook. She used to give cooking classes. I took my first cooking class with her when I was a Girl Scout, and we were there on Chestnut Street in an electrical building of some sort. A little spatula helps you get every drop. That's going to be so good. All right, time to put it in the oven. In my 9 by 12 cake pan, it's going to bake for 30 to 40 minutes. If I was using the two round um, cake pans, maybe the 8 inch, so that if I wanted to stack it and have icing in the middle, then I would bake it only 30 minutes because they're much smaller. 
So we'll just wait and we'll make some icing in the meantime. Okay, I got my cake out of the oven. And this is a hard cake to stick a toothpick in to tell if it's done. So let me tell you how I know it's done. It usually forms a crack in the center, which you can see. I don't know if my fingers are big enough here. There we go. A crack down the center. And if you look at the edges, it, it shrinks back from the edges. That's how you tell your cake is done. The crack in the center and shrinking back at the edges. So I've left this cool. I ran to the store because I was out of 10x sugar. And um, to make peanut butter icing, definitely need 10x sugar. So I'm going to start with two cups of 10x sugar. And to that, I'm going to add half of a cup of Crisco. And like I said, I really like the ones in the bars. So drop that in. And then because it's peanut butter icing, I'm also going to add a half cup of peanut butter, one half cup. And it's smooth, it's not crunchy because I want it to, I want to be able to swirl it. I like the swirls. So the final thing I need in here is a half a cup of milk. And whether you use a wooden spoon or a whisk, whatever you choose, you just start mixing it. And you want it light and fluffy. We're working on this. It's going to take me a little bit here to get it all mixed together. It's a little too soft, so I'm going to add another cup of confectioner sugar or 10x sugar. So that's three cups. Oh, by the way, we used from our local dairy, Wengert's Dairy Milk. How about that? Can you see in there how nice and smooth and creamy that peanut butter icing is? And of course, the more you beat it, the fluffier it will get. But at this time, Ah, oh, that's going to work. Okay, so here we go. We're going to put all this onto here. I'm probably going to have to get it out with my spatula. I'm just going to put all three cups on here. Now, some people like more icing, some people like less. But you can always take the icing off if you don't like it, but I think you're going to like it. Now, if you have kids, they'll probably want to fight to lick the icing. That's for sure. Kids are all grown up, and I don't have any little ones, but, oh, I remember the fighting over the who gets the spatula who gets the whisk, whatever. <laughs> All right, we're going to spread this icing out around the entire cake. Ooh, got a little powder on me there. So I like to go back and forth and make swirls that way. And then I like to do it the long way and just like make almost like waves in the icing and it just gives little peaks and swirls and it's lots of fun to look at, I think. A little more interesting than just straight lines. And you can alternate them, one go one way and one go the other. It doesn't really matter. Be a little creative, but there is my old Joe cake with peanut butter icing. 
let's get a piece out and try it. Just a small piece because it's almost dinner time, but here goes. Ooh, I'm gonna cut it all the way across so people can help themselves. Be good to pack in a lunch too. Getting that first piece out can be a little challenging, then the rest you can get a spatula underneath. It's really good. Bon appetit.